I've had a few requests from beginners and people that are new to handstands um, on how to put together a session or a daily practice. Um, these are my favorite exercises that I take beginners through, uh, especially in a class environment when I don't know the person. So really good for like the YouTube channel. So I'm gonna put this up uh, as a follow along program. So if you're new to handstands, uh, try each of the exercises um, and follow along in real time. So the times I've put on here is the time that I would allocate in a class. Um, if you're very new to handstands and you can't do the times at the moment, that's fine. Just cut back on them and slowly build up to it. Um, and I'll try and give some progressions and regressions as we go through it as well. So it will cover most people that are starting out. So let's kick straight into it. So let's go into the uh, wrist prep. So with that index finger forward, spread the other fingers, shoulders on top of the hands, and just do some circles around the hands. So start to explore how far can you go out with the arm straight, uh, we'll feel where's tight in the wrists, where's loose, uh, and then obviously spend more time in the tight areas, slowly make the circle bigger and bigger, and then change direction. And then fingers round to the outside, and you can see I'm going in between flexion and extension, walking the hands round so the fingers are facing back. Then slowly walk the knees in towards the fingers, sit the butt back towards the heels, and you're going to feel more of a stretch down the uh, forearm. And then we just hold that position. Now obviously everyone's very individual with the wrist stuff, so the uh, tighter your wrists are, the longer you should do. Uh, and then I'm just gonna start to peel the palms up away from the floor and slowly go through the fingers. And then forearms together, interlace the fingers, do some circles. So one direction will feel really nice and then the opposite direction will just feel really funky. And let's go into the shoulders. So with hips above the knees, toes pushed into the floor, go up onto fingertips, keeping the arms straight, shoulder width apart, and then take the chest towards the floor. Keep looking at the fingertips. So I've got the timer here for 30 seconds. and then slowly come back out. Okay, start to open the hips up. So this is a rec fem stretch, like a quad stretch. So knee cl as close as you can to the wall, but you wanna make sure that your hip is fully open. So you don't wanna have a hip crease, it doesn't wanna feel like it's pulling you forwards. If it's uncomfortable on the knee, just stick a cushion or something underneath. So 30 seconds on each side. Now it's very common to feel a difference between left and right. Normally the dominant leg will be tighter. So then we'll swap sides. So again, 30 second hold for the opposite leg. and then come out of that. And then we'll go into hamstrings. So hamstrings, I either go into a um, single leg, so one leg at a time, or I do a forward fold. So with this program, we'll just go into a forward fold. So taking the elbows towards the floor, keeping the knees locked backwards. And this is a 60 second hold. Now just be careful with this one. If you are very tight in the hamstrings, 
uh, and there's a lot of rounding through the back, you're probably better off doing one on the floor. So laying on, the, on your back with your leg, one leg up against the, the wall or a doorway, uh, making sure you don't feel it in the back. It should all be in the hamstring to initially. You can see that I'm doing little bounces. Um, I wouldn't do bounces until you get very comfortable in the forward fold position. slowly come out of that. See, I like to go up and down out of some squats. So in and out of a resting squat into your forward fold just to finish. And then it's going into your first position in drill. So this is again a 60 second hold, making sure the low back stays on the floor. Now if that's too hard, you can raise the feet up which makes it slightly easier or you can bend the knees or a combination of, or com combination of both. So we want to be able to keep breathing with this one because this is where we're going to get ready to be able to hold a 60 second handstand. So you want to be able to breathe while you're there. If you're holding the breath, it's too hard. So it's too maximal. So just find a position where you can hold. If it becomes easy, you can start to lower the legs, start to straighten the legs. We can put the head back onto the floor and we can also raise the arms above our head, which again is slightly harder. So ideally the arms and the hands would be shoulder width apart with the arms straight. And the big thing is just making the body as long as possible while maintaining that low back onto the floor. So we can bend the knees as well, keeping the low back on the floor. And that's the 60 second hold. Hi guys. And then into my favorite hamstring exercise, so the inchworm. So keeping the legs locked backwards, the knees locked back. Walking the feet as close as you can to with the hands without the knees bending. Hold for a couple of seconds and then walk back out again. It's a real good one to start working on that compression and just um, getting the hip nice and high. So we wanna get the hip as close to being on top of the hands as possible with the least amount of energy. That way entries to handstand is much easier. Kick ups, um, presses, uh, jumps to handstands all easier if we can get the hips on top of the hands. So um, 10 repetitions I've done here. So keeping the legs straight, walking in as close as you can, hold for a couple of seconds, walk back out again. Okay, then once you've done your 10 reps, it's going into a chest to wall handstand. So this is one that's gonna vary a lot depending on the individual. So the 60 second hold. So ideally you'd walk all the way into the wall, only the toes touching the wall and get the best possible line you can. So this is gonna vary depending on your hip and shoulder flexibility. So ideally you hold that position. If you feel the body sags in any way, try and push back out again. If it's too hard, don't go in so close to the wall. So notice there that my hands are now further away from the wall. We don't want to sag like that. So we don't want the hips going towards the wall. We want to keep them up away from the wall. It's a bit like doing a plank or something. We don't want the, the body to sag down. So ideally close to the wall, only the toes touching, pushing the floor away from you and reaching for the ceiling with the toes. And then whenever you need to come down, come down with control. The goal is 60 seconds, but if you last five seconds to start with, that's fine. Next attempt, try and do 10 seconds. And then into the seated straddle stretch. Again, very good for handstands, for entries, for exits, and just general hip mobility for the handstand. So ideally you'd be able to sit into a straddle like that on the floor uh, and not like that. So not falling backwards. If you feel like you're gonna fall backwards, you need to raise the butt up. So now I'm gonna sit up onto these yoga blocks. Some people will need to stack two blocks on top of each other or even go um, much higher. You wanna be able to feel like you're leaning forwards. So then let's go into a 60 second hold. 
in that straddle position and I'm just gonna lean forwards as deep as I can. Now ideally what will happen over the 60 seconds is you'll be able to go deeper and deeper. So I might start on my elbows and then the head becomes closer and closer to the floor. And this varies a lot depending on time of day and things. So um, I know I can get belly button chest to the floor. So by the end of the 60 seconds, I'll be there. But some days that it will take the whole 60 seconds to get there. Sometimes it will, I'll be there in 10 seconds. So you see I'm adjusting the hips just to get nice and comfortable into that straddle position. Note the straddle pancake can take a long time to uh, feel like you make an improvement with it. Took me about four years, I think, to go from not being able to sit in it to be able to get chest to floor. Okay, now into the kick-ups. So this is where it's going to vary a lot uh, on the individual. So roughly a hand space away from the wall, shoulders on top of hands, and then just do a little kick. Push the floor away from you as much as you can before you try. Kick and just see what happens. If you feel confident and you can, you're happy to put a lot of weight into the hands, go all the way up, see if you can kiss the wall. Not smash into the wall, kiss the wall. And with the repetitions, try and have the same consistency every time. So the same setup, the same hip height, the same position of the shoulder, the same power in the kick, unless you intentionally change something. What I see a lot is people change their position every attempt of the kick up. Uh, so the shoulders are in a different position, the hips are in a different position, uh, and the power is different. So, and then every time you change one of those variables, the other things need to change as well. So it's just random. Um, so try and make that as consistent as possible. And here I'm doing 10 repetitions in a row and trying to make them as consistent as possible and trying to get the same kiss of the wall each time. So the different levels that I normally teach uh, is uh, half kick up, uh, kick up and kiss the wall with one foot, uh, kick up and kiss the wall with two feet, kick up and hold, slowly go to the wall, and then obviously a kick up and a hold would be the final one. And then just a good morning, so uh, feet shoulder width apart, keeping the legs straight, and just play with how deep you can go, keeping the back as flat as possible, open and closing the hip. Just make sure that you fully open the hip at the top. So with the handstand, whenever we go uh, from an entry into the handstand, it's normally from a closed hip position into an open hip. So it's really important that we have a good range, good mobility, and be able to open and close the hip. The final exercise of this program is pulling away from the wall using the fingertips. So I've kicked to the wall squeezing the legs together, keeping the body as one segment, and then pushing through the hands. Uh, and imagine that energy going up through the body and then pulling the heels off the wall. So it's 10 repetitions of that. This will take a little while for most people to feel and under, really understand. But if, you're, if you stand uh, upright and lean forwards, keep the body as one segment, so stand on your feet and lean forwards, all the weight will go into your toes. If you push the toes into the floor, you'll be able to level the body back up again. And that's what you're doing on your hands. So you kick up, kick up to the wall, so your heels are touching, legs squeeze together, keep the body one segment, push the fingers into the floor until the heels float off the wall. So 10 repetitions. And that's it. So that's what I'd recommend for most beginners. You just hit those exercises, swap in and out uh, any flexibility stuff. So obviously if you're very open in the hamstrings, you don't want to be spending loads of time in the hamstring. If you're flat in pancake already, replace the pancake and the hamstring to something that you need to work on. Uh, stick any questions, comments, uh, any other videos you'd like. Uh, thumbs up would be appreciated. Subscribe. Um, any feedback, even if it's negative, if you want me to change anything, if you don't like it, if you, yeah, if you can't, if the sound's terrible, lots of feedback would be great. Love it. Thank you. Bye.